What's up guys? This week, the Singapore-based company Sabre sent me one of their M20 Construct flagship blasters. This one's in the green color scheme and they've added the camo decal that they put on my other one. But this one, they've added one of their prototypes of the brand new auto kit, which is set to release in September. In case you're unaware, the M20 Construct is a foam dart blaster, which usually is manually operated. So you have to cock the spring yourself between every single shot. It fires a one gram projectile, usually around 280 feet per second, but all the way up to 350 feet per second, depending on the length of the barrel that you go with, as well as the strength of the spring. It can be a little tiring on your arms to cock that spring for an entire day. And also between each shot that you take, you'll have to reacquire your target in the scope because you'll be lifting the blaster up to cock that shotgun grip and then dropping it back down again. That is where the auto kit comes in. The auto kit is designed to be an add-on to the M20 construct, and it simply cocks the spring automatically using a motor every single time you fire the blaster. So if I pull the trigger here, it fires, racks the bolt, compresses the spring, and then loads another dart ready for the next trigger pull. And once I fire an entire mag of darts, I can then open the breech using this button on the remote at the front here load in my next mag, and then close the breech again. The auto kit is designed to work with their 14 kilo spring, which with a 500 millimeter barrel gives you around 280 feet per second velocities. And that's of course with semi-auto firing and the high accuracy and range you'd expect of a high power Nerf Springer. We've got rifling built into the barrel, so you'll be shooting paper at 30 meters, although the maximum range is gonna be somewhere around 70 meters. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen the leaks out of China of some AEG Nerf blasters that are gonna hit the market pretty soon. Those things only shoot 180 feet per second. This blaster shoots 100 FPS higher because of the massive air volume inside the cylinder. So this is gonna be a superior blaster at long ranges. In this video today, I'll give you an overview of the auto kit itself. Then I'll take the blaster outside and chrono it, check the accuracy at 30 meters, and then I'll use it in some gameplay. Let's get started. So first, let's start from an external perspective of how to operate the blaster. The auto kit is powered by a 6S LiPo, so 24 volts, and that plugs in via an XT60 connector at the rear of the blaster. The battery itself is stored inside the stock which is hollowed out to fit the battery. Once you turn on the power switch, the breech opens and is ready for you to insert a mag. Once you've inserted a mag, there is a remote at the front of the blaster and the front button will close the breech, making the blaster ready to fire. After you've emptied the mag, you can then press the rear button to open the bolt, swap your mag out and then close it again. Now, I'll just add that what actually tells the blaster to cock it again is the release of the trigger. So if I hold the trigger in, nothing happens until I take my finger off of the trigger. Now, once you're done using the blaster, there's a couple of different ways you could decock the spring, just so you're not leaving it compressed and weakening it. The most simple way will be simply to remember that when you fire the blaster, it doesn't do anything until you release the trigger. So if at this point you simply turn the blaster off at that power switch, the spring is completely released and there's no tension on the spring. I should also probably mention that because of how well this blaster is built, it's completely safe to dry fire it. You're not gonna break anything by doing that. Depending on the particular 6S LiPo you decide to buy for this blaster, can get up to at least a thousand shots out of this before having to recharge. Mine though is only a 1200 milliamp hour battery, so I get about 500 shots out of mine. But I think that's completely plenty for the kind of play style that I have, especially with the accuracy of this blaster, you don't really need many shots. I usually only go through about maybe 40 shots per game. If the battery does go flat though, you can revert the blaster back to manual operation it takes about five to 10 minutes to do that, depending on your experience in reversing the process. But to revert the M20 construct back to its manual form, first disconnect the battery, then remove the optic or attachment you have on the Picatinny rail. 
The bolts holding the Picatinny rail on are partially what secure the auto kit to the blaster. So remove the Picatinny rail by removing those three bolts. And finally, remove two more bolts down on the magwell and carefully pull the auto kit directly out because there's some sensors you could bend or break if you remove it off center. Now that the auto kit itself is removed, you need to recouple the front priming bar to the grip. Do this by first removing whatever grip you have attached. Remove the Picatinny rail it attaches to. Then take your old two-piece manual priming rail and position it so the tabs at the top slot into the priming bars. And lock it in place with this L-shaped bracket using two screws at the front. And now you can manually prime the blaster again. Reattach your grip and away you go. But now that we have the auto kit removed, why don't we take a look at what makes the blaster tick. The first thing you'll probably notice is the huge 24 volt DC high torque motor, which has the motor shaft and gears angled at 90 degrees. Apparently this design of motor is used in electric wheelchairs, but to cock such a large and heavy spring, it is required. The pinion gear is CNC steel and interfaces with an internal rack attached to the bolt, which is also CNC steel. The auto kit housing, much like the M20 blaster shell itself, is made of Delrin. And other notable components inside here include an infrared sensor at the rear of the blaster, which tracks the movement of the catch. There's another infrared sensor at the front of the blaster, which tracks the movement of the bolt. The list of electronics includes Arduino Nano, 40 amp Mini Hawk motor driver board, onboard voltage regulator and stabilizer, and the Sabre EB1 electronics board. This is designed to be user programmable, but personally, I think it works completely fine in the stock configuration, so I won't be touching on any of the programming. One more important detail that I should probably mention is that this is not a light blaster with the auto kit attached. Ignoring the scope that I have on top, this weighs 3.8 kilograms. Now that wasn't personally an issue for me running a sniper kind of role, but I definitely would not even consider taking this on the front lines and running around with it. So now let's head outside and shoot this over the chronograph to see what kind of velocity we're getting with that 14 kilo spring. Keeping in mind, this is not designed to work with the 18 kilo, so I won't be trying that today. Two seventy four, two seventy eight, two seventy three, two seventy seven, two eighty four, three oh one, two seventy five, two eighty, two eighty one, and ending on two seventy eight. So we got a high of three oh one, a low of two seventy three, and an average of two hundred and eighty exactly. Also, the rate of fire, I tested that off camera and it's getting about 0.8 rounds per second, which isn't quick, but with the accuracy of this blaster, you don't need it to shoot quick. Regarding that accuracy though, I think it's best that this blaster speaks for itself. So let's go and stand 30 meters away from a one meter diameter target. You'll be able to see that I don't have to readjust my aim between shots. It just keeps automatically reloading when I release the trigger.
plus four. As you'd expect of the M20 construct from Sabre, not a single shot missed that target at 30 meters. So, what do I think of the auto kit? Well, the auto kit definitely has its advantages over manual operation. Whether you're not strong enough to cock a 14 kilo spring all day, or whether you just want the advantage of not having to reacquire a target between shots. Just keep the crosshairs on them and keep delivering shots at them until you hit. Now, some of the downsides that I can tell, the first is obviously the weight. 3.8 kilograms makes this double the weight of most real steel firearms. The other downside I'd say is definitely the price. The auto kit itself is 650 Singapore dollars, which is about the same, I think 651 Australian dollars or 480 USD. So that pretty much makes this out of the price range of a lot of people. But the blaster itself is about the same amount. So the blaster itself was already out of the price range of most people. Also keep in mind that HPA blasters are completely banned in multiple locations such as Singapore, where this M20 is actually made. So where HPA can't be used, this is probably the closest you'll ever get to HPA. In a moment, I'll end off the video with a round of gameplay from the Battle for Waterloo skirmish field, where I'll be playing against full auto gel blasters using this blaster here. I mostly stick to the back lines playing a sniper kind of role. I definitely don't run anywhere with this 3.8 kilo blaster, but I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Hope you enjoy the gameplay. Make sure you subscribe for future videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Wait, you're using an earth? Sham well. I'm going to go against you. Here we go. Get it done, get it done. Let's do this. First kill. Thank <laughs> you.